Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R240 server. In this video we're going to specifically focus on RAID. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R240 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's hop in. This video is going to be specifically focused on RAID. So what we're going to do is uh, compare all the different options. Uh, we'll put up a nice little chart, show you all the different RAID levels and uh, different specs of the you know different types of RAIDs that are compatible with the R240. And then we're actually going to install one of our RAID cards, and then we're going to show you how to actually configure RAID. So let's go ahead and hop in, and, and we're going to lay out all the different options next to each other and show you a little table that kind of breaks down all the specs. Let's go. All right, so we've laid out all the different uh, hardware RAID options here for the PowerEdge R240. So we're going to put up a chart. It's going to go over the different RAID options, the RAID levels, the uh, the cache, the drive speeds, the PCIe gen, uh, and if it's a hardware or software RAID. So first off, it's the uh, S140, which is an onboard software. It's got RAID levels of 0, 1, 5, and 10. There's no cache, of course, since it is a software RAID, and it has drive speeds of 6 gigabit for SATA. It does not support SAS. Next up, is uh, the HBA330. Now, the HBA330 has RAID levels of 0, 1, 5, 10, and 50. There's no cache. Uh, it has drive speeds of 6 gigabit for SATA, 12 for SAS. It's PCIe 3.0, and it is our first hardware RAID that we're featuring. Next up is the H330, which had, has RAID levels of 0, 1, 5, 10, and 50. There's no cache. It has the same drive speeds at 6 for SATA and 12 for SAS. PCIe 3.0, and it is a hardware rate of course. Next up on the list is the H730. Now the H730 has RAID levels of 0, 1, 5, 6, 10, 50, 60. There's one gigabit of, I'm sorry, one gigabyte of cache. Um, it's 6 and 12 for uh, SATA and SAS for your drive speeds. PCIe 3.0 and it is a hardware rate of course. Uh, next up is the H 730p. Now the H730p has the same RAID levels as the H730, 0, 1, 5, 6, 10, 50, and 60. The big difference is there's 2 gigabytes of cache. It's going to be 6 and 12 again for the drive speeds. PCIe 3.0 and it is a hardware RAID. Next up is the H740p and the H740p has uh, RAID levels of 0, 1, 5, 6, 10, 50, and 60 and it's 8 gigs of cache, and it's going to be 6 for SATA, 12 for SASH, and it is PCIe 3.1, and it is a hardware RAID, of course. So these are all the various uh, hardware RAID options and also the software one that we mentioned. Now, we'll note one thing that's important is uh, there is not a mini mono RAID for the R240. You do have to use the PCIe version or software. Um, you will not be able to, uh, to get a mini mono for your R240. So I did want to highlight that if someone was wondering, uh, mini monos are not compatible. So all right, now let's go ahead and install our RAID. All right, so now we are going to install our RAID. So this is what we're going to need is just a Phillips head screwdriver and our RAID card. So first things first, let's go ahead and pop the latch. I will note we are doing this on the four bay hot swap. So we're going to want to remove our riser. So we're just going to lift this straight up. So let's open this up back here. Whoops, let's open this up back here. Let's pull this straight up. So once you remove the riser, you will notice there are two blue screws. That's what we have our Phillips head for, is to remove these two screws. So if you look right here, this is a dedicated uh, PCIe for our, for our, our RAID card. Okay, So uh, that is essentially what we're working towards. We're going to remove these uh, two screws, and we are going to install the, uh, the RAID card onto uh, this PCIe slot. So uh, essentially, we're going to need to connect to A, and then we're going to need to take this right here, and we're going to put it over here, and you'll see this is kind of on a hinge. Hopefully my hand's not blocking that, but we're on a hinge, so you see that right here. So we're going to open that up. We're going to install this in. I like to put the cable in first, and then we're going to screw it back down. So that's essentially what we're doing. So let's go ahead and get this plugged in to A. Oops. So we've got this hooked up. So now we're going to go ahead and put our leads in down here into the PCIe slot. So we've got that done. And then we're going to swing this over. 
and you'll notice our screw holes are lined back up perfectly. So now we're just going to install our screws and we have essentially in upgraded and installed our RAID. So really it's not that hard at all. Um, you just need to uh, be aware of um, this top part up here just to make sure that you have it, have enough space. And uh, really it's a, a pretty simple install overall. So now we're just going to simply put our riser back on. So let's just line everything up. And it's nice and flush. And then we'll close this up back here. And we have installed our RAID. All right, so now we're going to actually install our RAID um, for the two bay. We'll go ahead and install it. Oh, the other thing I wanted to note, you'll notice you need a bracket, okay? Uh, so you're going to actually need a bracket, whereas uh, for the four bay, you were able to just screw it in and there was no bracket because for the four bay, there's a dedicated PCIe uh, on the uh, the motherboard for the RAID and there's not for the two bay and that's one of the big differences and we'll also highlight that in our different chassis video. So, all right, first things first, I'm just going to pop the latch and lift the top. So we're going to need to remove the riser. And when we move, remove the riser, I want to point out and note, uh, right here is where you would normally uh, have seen or where we saw when we just did it on our four bay, that is where the dedicated PCIe is. But uh, because there's not a dedicated PCIe for the RAID, you're going to need to actually use the regular PCIe slot. All right, so now we're going to put the right one in and notice uh, we have a bracket for this versus the um, a four bay that doesn't need it. So when we plug the right one in, okay, and we get it all hooked up, get this situated back here. So now um, I'm going to go ahead and install this into A. So now we've connected it to the back plane and we are just going to put our riser back in. So uh, realistically, it's a, a pretty easy install overall um, as far as doing this, but uh, there are you know just a couple of caveats that I wanted to highlight and point up. So now we've lined up our riser. Everything is nice and flush. Sometimes there's a little bit of extra cable and you might need to push it back up here into this space, but everything's nice and flush. And we've installed our RAID card into the two bay. So now what we're going to do is actually configure RAID. Hey guys, it's Ben with Cloud Ninjas and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to configure RAID 5. You're going to want to make sure that you have a RAID controller installed into your server. Scott showed you how to do this beforehand, so go ahead and follow his instructions. And then once you've installed a RAID controller, you can actually go ahead and configure RAID 5. Um, and not just RAID 5, you can configure other RAID levels as well, but specifically in this video, we're going to be going over RAID 5. You also want to make sure that you have a minimum of three drives installed in order to configure RAID 5. Um, this is something that's specific for RAID 5. RAID 0 and RAID 1, they have different minimum drive requirements. So go ahead and research the drive requirements for the desired RAID level that you are looking for, and then just make sure you have that number of drives installed. And if you want to install more than that minimum, then you're more than welcome to. But specifically for this video, you're going to want to need a minimum of three drives plugged into your server. So in order to get started, you want to go ahead and boot up your server. And during post, you want to go ahead and press F2 so we can go into system setup. Once in system setup, go ahead and scroll down to device settings. Once we're in device settings, you want to go ahead and click on the option that represents our RAID controller. And inside of this menu, we can go ahead and click on configuration management. And then we can click on create virtual disk. Once we're in here, we can go ahead and select our RAID level. So like we said earlier, we're going to go ahead and do RAID 5. We're going to leave unconfigured capacity unchecked, and then we're going to select select physical disk. We want to go ahead and change the media type to both and then apply those changes. And then down here, we want to select all three of our drives, and then we want to click apply changes. Now we just want to go ahead and click OK. And then we can scroll up and then click Create Virtual Disk and click Confirm and then Yes. Then we can just go ahead and click OK again. So really what that was saying was that, hey, if you do this operation, if we create this virtual disk, it will erase all the data that is on, that, on those drives. So if you're okay with erasing the data that's on these drives or those drives have no data at all, then you're all good to create the virtual disk. Now once that's done loading, there's only one step I like to take just so I can make sure that everything was done properly 
and that creating this virtual disk did indeed work. So we want to go back to that main menu and then go to virtual disk management. And here we can see where it says virtual disk zero RAID 5. So this is that RAID 5 array that we just created. So as you can see, it did indeed work and we have successfully configured RAID 5. If you found this video useful, go ahead and leave a like and smash the subscribe. And if you're interested in purchasing a custom built server, whether it's Dell, HP, Supermicro, Cisco, um, we have plenty in stock. We also have AMD Ryzen servers, AMD Epic servers, Intel Xeon scalable servers. So if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. Take care, guys.